Hi, this is Steve. Welcome back to Footage Factory. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Schumacher 1200 Peak Amp Power Source. Why do we need this? Well, you might be jumping a truck, jumping a car, you might be making a margarita while you're camping, uh, you might be uh, watching a TV. Is there a TV up front? Look at it. On, on the box, I got a TV on here, so they're obviously watching TV from this unit. Open this thing up. Important. Charge immediately after purchase for the first 36 hours. So make sure that you have 36 hours of charging with this thing. Uh, more useful information it comes in different languages. Uh, we have a, looks like a, uh, something to blow up your, your balloons that have sitting here all day before you go into the, into the water with the floaty. Charge immediately after use every 30 days. So every 30 days, make sure you charge this thing every 30 days. Ooh, look at this thing. Oh, look, drop a piece right there. A few more things to look at. George Foreman, blender, lights, all plugged into four different units. Um, we got the cigarette lighter socket. We have, uh, we have, see how charged up it is? It's 100%. It doesn't cut in 100% from the get-go, so I might have charged it beforehand. And a TV. If you look at it, you got the charger portion right here. Take this and put it on this side. So you got to find yourself an extension cord, and uh, the screen light will come on when it, when it starts charging. Uh, this that does the compressor for the tires. This that does the air for your kids' floaties. Um, you have a psi gauge on the back, right here. I'm gonna tell you right now that psi gauge is. Not accurate. It's up to you to determine how off it is. If uh, if it says 35 psi and really it's 10 off, and your tire's at 45 psi, know ahead of time that it's off by 10 psi. Um, opening this back portion up. If you go to the Amazon link and you look at the picture of this XJ. 2260, the 2260, XP2260, you'll notice that the tire pressure portion is different. This is a screw-on versus the uh, the one that has a little clamp on it. So they are different. Is one better than one another? Actually, I prefer this. It holds the PSI out a little bit better. All right, we're going to test this thing out. So bear with me. We call this the four lamps and a drill test. And the lamps pass and the drill failed. Now for one of the most important features of this power unit, the jumping capability. Plug it into a fully charged battery and it acts as a multimeter of the sort showing the charge of this battery. So as you can tell right now, this battery is good to go. But if you look to the left, we got ourselves a, a dead battery. Red first, negative second. And this thing is so dead, it barely registers. It's like five, six volts right now. But as soon as you flip the switch, you're not able to jump your car. So it's at like 13 volts. 
and that's how you jump it. You really put this compressor to the test using such a large tire with more volume than your average, let's say, Toyota Corolla tire. It would be wise to make sure you have a separate pressure gauge so you can double check the pressure gauge that's on the machine itself. Take that threaded air chuck and screw it onto the valve stem. Turn the compressor on and keep an eye on the pressure gauge. Keep in mind this thing only has roughly 15 minutes before it overheats. And once it overheats, it will take about a good half an hour for it to cool down enough for it to work. To be safe, it should only really have about five minutes of use. That's the best you're gonna get out of this, but in a pinch, let's hope it works. You'll see here, it's actually overheated. This thing was able to give me the 32 PSI, which should be adequate to get me down the road. If you have a donut, I don't see why this thing wouldn't be able to top off the required amount of pressure. For a car tire, Toyota Corolla, Honda Civic, whatever, I think you'll be alright with this thing.